um, as some of you may know, we recently lost a really great member of our float community, Michael Hutchinson, who wrote the Book of Floating and um, did a really incredible job spreading really valuable and pertinent education about float tanks to a lot of people. I'm sure it's where a lot of us got kind of a foundation of our knowledge. Um, it's certainly where I got a good foundation of my knowledge for floating. Um, he passed away this year. And uh, Shoshana is here. She was a good friend of his and just wanted to share some stories with us in his memory. So um, we're going to bring Shoshana on stage now. So I'm just going to uh, read a, uh, an obituary that was just written for Michael. Um, it was published in the um, Santa Fe, New Mexican is the newspaper, local newspaper there. It reads, Michael Hutchinson, one of the pioneer promoters of brain boosting technology, died July 23rd. <laughs> at his home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Michael Hutchinson's book, Mega Brain, 1986, and Mega Brain Power, 1991, revolutionized the field of brain-boosting technology. Michael held workshops and seminars and produced recordings focused on the brain technology and gained an international following. After he suffered a spinal injury in an accident, Michael became a, a quadriplegic but continued to contribute his ideas and knowledge to this field. Michael Hutchinson was born April 9, 1945 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and grew up in Ohio. After graduating from Wooster College in Ohio, he lived many years in New York, moved to California, and finally settled in Santa Fe to pursue his writing career. Michael is most proud of his son, Galen, and is survived by his sisters, Suzanne, Kiefer, Lucinda Bro Brewer, and Callie Hutchison. He was the son of the late Adele and Russell S. Hutchinson. Hutchison. His family wishes to thank the many people who helped Michael live the independent life he wanted. And that was published on August 13th to August 15th, 2013. The only other thing I want to share is a personal note he wrote for me. And it reads this. I had been a hermit for two years, first, to, first, in a, first in a lean to and later in a log cabin I built. I was totally alone for months at a time. One of the books that I had brought with me to read was John Lilly's description of his first experiences in, in the flotation tank. After two years of sensory isolation in my mountaintop hideaway, I had been hiding I, I've been having strange hallucinations, feelings of being out of my body or in other planets, awesome spiritual experiences, and many of the experiences that John Lilly described having in the sensory deprivation chamber. I thought, wow, it's taken me two years of isolation out here in the wilderness to attain these experiences, and here this guy has built this tank that you can climb into and even, more, even have more far out experiences in 15 minutes. When I get back home to New York City, the first thing I'm going to do is, is hop into one of these flotation tanks. And in fact, one of the first things I did when I returned to New York was to get an assignment from the Village Voice to write an article about flotation. I innocently made an appointment at New York's one tank at the time, only tank center at the time, and when I walked in, I was welcomed by the <laughs> I was welcomed by the most beautiful woman <laughs> you, you could imagine who ran the place. This was Shoshana Liebner. <laughs> it's funny reading it. <laughs> so he, he continues to say, I, think, I came to think of her as the goddess of floating. Obviously, my first float was extraordinary, and you can read exactly how it happened in the book of floating. One of the things I did not write in the book happened during my second float. Uh, purportedly during research for my article. <laughs> Actually, because I was already addicted to floating, I had an amazing fantasy. Just think, I thought to myself while I was floating, what would happen if this article attracted a lot of attention and I ended up writing a book about floating? <laughs> 
Then Shoshana and the others who ran the float center would let me have as much free floats as I wanted. Then I would come up here and float several times a week. I will also see Shoshana. Wow, all these things happen. That's just exactly what happened to me. My article was reprinted all over the world, and float centers throughout the country were booked up months in advance. My agent told me to put aside the novel I was writing and write the book of floating. Um, I was able to float for free as often as I, as I wanted. I became very close friends of Shoshana. In the years since the book has been published, Shoshana has been all over the world introducing the float tanks into many countries. I still think of her as the goddess of floating. Amazing how these things work out. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm here with the uh, Flotation Tank Association. And if you'd like to see the original uh, Village Voice article, I have it. You can come and read it at our, and sign up to join the FTA. Thanks for coming. Uh -huh.